you can never have too much practice dealing with the normal distribution because it's really one of those super important building blocks for the rest of statistics and really a lot of your life. Uh, so what I've done here is I've taken some sample problems. This is from ck12.org's open source flexbook, their AP Statistics flexbook, and I've taken the problems from their normal distribution chapter. So you could go to their site and actually look at look up these same problems. So this first problem which of the following data sets is most likely to be normally distributed? For the other choices, explain why you believe they would not follow a normal distribution. So let's see, choice A. So this is a really, this is, you know, my beliefs come into play. So this is unusual in the math context. It's more of a, what do I think? It's kind of an essay question. So let's, let's see what they have here. A, the hand span, measured from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the extended fifth finger. So I think they're talking about, let me see if I can draw a hand. So if that's... That's the index finger, and then you got the middle finger, and then you got your ring finger, and then you got your pinky, and the hand will look something like that. I think they're talking about this distance from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the extended fifth finger, which is a fancy way of saying the pinky, I think. They're talking about that distance right there, and they're saying, if I were to measure it of a random sample of high school seniors, what would it look like? Well, you know, how far this is, this is a combination of genetics and environmental factors, maybe how much milk you drank or, you know, how much you hung from your pinky from a bar when while you were growing up. So I, I would think that it is, you know, a sum of a, a huge number of random processes. So I would guess that it is roughly normally distributed. You know, if I look at uh, my own hand, and I, my hand I don't think has grown much since I was a high school senior. It looks like, I don't know, it looks like roughly uh, nine inches or so. I, I play guitar, maybe that helped me uh, stretch my hand. But if, if that's, you know, it's really an essay question, so I just have to say what I feel. So I would guess that the distribution would look something like this. I don't know, I've never done this, but you know, maybe it has a mean of eight inches or nine inches, and it's distributed something like this. It's distributed something like this. So maybe it probably does look like a normal distribution, but it probably won't be a perfect, in fact, I can, I can guarantee you it won't be a perfect normal distribution, because one, no one can have uh, anything, can have negative length of that span. This distance can never be negative, so they're going to have a, uh, I guess, in, you know, you can, you can have no hand, so that would maybe be counted as zero. But the distribution wouldn't go into the negative domain, so it wouldn't be a perfect, it wouldn't be a perfect normal distribution on the left hand side. It would really just end here at zero. And even on the right hand side, there is some physically impossible hand lengths. So no one can have a hand uh, that's that's larger uh, th than the than the height of the of Earth's atmosphere or, or you know an astronomical unit. You would you would start touching the sun. I, you, there, there's some point at which it is physically impossible to to get to. And you know in a in a true normal distribution, if I were to flip a bunch of coins, there's some very very small probability that I could get a million heads in the row in a row. It's almost zero, but there's some probability. But in the case of hand spans, there's no way out here. You know, the probability of a human being who happens to be a high school senior having a, I don't know, one mile length, one mile length hand span, that's zero. So it's not going to be a perfect normal distribution at the outliers or as we get further and further away from the mean. But I think it'll be a pretty good, you know, in, a, in our everyday world, as, as good as we're going to get approximation, uh, the normal distribution is going to be a pretty good approximation for the distribution that we see. I guess one thing that you know, it, it's you know, this is high school seniors. What I just when I did this, I was, it was kind of from my point of view as a as a guy, and I would argue that you know, high school seniors, guys probably have larger hands than women. So there, it's possible that you actually have a bimodal distribution. So instead of having it like this, it's possible that the distribution looks like this: that you have one peak for guys, maybe at eight inches, and then maybe a, a slight another peak for uh, women at uh, you know, I don't know, at seven inches, and then it dis the distribution falls off like that. So it's it's also possible it could be bimodal, but in general, this is going to uh, a normal distribution is going to be a pretty good approximation for part A of this problem. Let's see what part B what they're asking us to describe. The annual salaries of all employees of a large shipping company. So if we're talking about annual salaries, you know, we have minimum wage laws whatnot. So I would guess that any corporation if we're talking about full-time workers at least, there's going to be some minimum salary that people have, so I would say, and probably a lot of people will have that minimum salary because it'll be uh, probably the most labor-intensive jobs. And you probably have most people are are down there at the low end of the pay scale, and then you have your different middle-level managers and whatnot, and then you probably have you know this big gap, and then you probably have your uh, 
your 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 true executives, maybe your CEO or whatnot, with a with you know if this if this mean right here is maybe forty forty thousand dollars a year, and you know this is probably eighty thousand where you know, some of the mid level managers lie, but this out here this will probably be you know actually if you were to draw a real you know the way I've scaled it right now this would be eighty this would be this would be about two hundred thousand, which is actually you know a reasonable salary for uh, a CEO, but the reality is is that this actually might get pushed way out from there. It might look something like that. It might be way off the charts. You know, if, let's say the CEO made uh, five million dollars in a year because he cashed in a bunch of options or something. So it'd be way over here, and maybe it's the CEO and a couple of other people, the CFO uh, or, or the founders. So my guess is it would it, it would it, it definitely wouldn't be a normal distribution, it, and it definitely would have a second. It would be bimodal. You would have another peak over here for senior management. Up at the uh, unless we're uh, well, they're not saying you know if we're in maybe in Europe, this this would probably be closer to the left, but it won't be a perfect normal distribution, and you're not going to have any values below a certain threshold, below that kind of minimum wage level. So I would call this when you have a tail that goes more to the right than to the left, call this a right skewed distribution, right skewed right skewed distribution and since it has two humps right here one there and one there we could also say it's bimodal I mean, it depends on what you, what kind of company this is but that would be my guess of uh, a lot of uh, large shipping companies salaries let's look at choice c or or problem part c the annual salaries of a random sample of 50 ceos of major companies 25 women and 25 men the fact that they wrote this here i think they Maybe are implying that maybe men and women, you know, the 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 gender gap has not been closed fully, and there there is uh, some discrepancy. So if it was just purely 50 CEOs of major companies, I would say it's probably close to a normal distribution. It's probably something like, well, you know, once again, there's going to be some level below which no CEO is willing to work for. Although you know, I've heard of some cases where they work for free, but they're really getting paid in other ways. If you include all of those things, there's probably some base salary that all CEOs make at least that much and then it goes up to some it goes up to some value you know the highest probability value and then it probably has a long tail to the right and this is if there were no gender gap so this would just be a purely right skewed distribution where you have a long tail to the right now if you assume that there's some gender gap then you might have two two humps here which would be a bimodal distribution so if you assume there's some gender gap and this is part C right here then maybe there's one hump for women, and if you assume that women are less than men, then another hump for men. And there are 25 of each, so there wouldn't be more necessarily more men than women. And then it would skew all the way off to the right. And in fact, I think there would probably be a chance that you have this other uh, notion here where you have these you know, super CEOs or mega CEOs who make millions, while most CEOs probably just make, you know, just, I'll put it in quotation marks, a few hundred thousand dollars, while there's a small subset uh, that are way off many standard deviations to the right. So it could even be a trimodal uh, distribution here. So that's choice C. And then, and so far, choice A looks like the best candidate for a pure or, or the closest to being a normal distribution. Let's see what choice, what D is. The dates of 100 pennies taken from a cash drawer in a convenience store. 100 pennies. So that's actually an interesting experiment. But I would guess, and once again, this is really a question where I get to express my feelings about these things. You know, there's as long as your answer is reasonable, I would say that it is right. Most pennies are newer pennies because they go out of commission, they get traded out, they get worn out as they age, they get lost, or you know, or they get put, you know, pressed at, at the little tourist place into those little souvenir things. I'm not even sure if that's legal, if you can do that to money legally. But so my guess is that if you were to plot it, you would have a ton of pennies that are, you know, within the last few years. So if we were, so the dates of 100 pennies, not their age. So the dates. So if we're sitting here in 2000, so if this is 2010, I would guess that right now you're not going to find any 2010 pennies, but you're probably going to find, you're probably going to find a ton of 2009 pennies, and then it probably just goes down from there. And of course, you're not going to find uh, uh, pennies that are older than. Uh, say the the United States or before they even started printing pennies, so it's obviously this tail isn't going to go to the left forever. But my guess is this is going you're going to have a left skewed distribution, left skewed, where you have the bulk of the distribution on the right, but the tail goes off to the left. That's why it's called a left skewed distribution. Sometimes this is called a negatively, negatively skewed.
skewed distribution. And similarly, this right skewed distribution could all, or this right skewed distribution, sometimes it's called positively skewed. And if you have only one hump, you, you don't have a, a, a multimodal distribution like this. In a left skewed distribution, your mean is going to be to the left of your median. So in this case, maybe your median might be someplace over here. But since you have this long tail to the left, your mean might be someplace over here. And likewise, in this distribution, your median, your middle value, might be someplace like this. But because it's right skewed, and for the most part, it only has one big hump, this hump won't change things too much because it's small, your mean is going to be to the right of it. So that's another reason why it's called a right skewed or positively skewed distribution. So to answer the question, you know, these are my feelings about all of them, but I would say, you know, for the other choices, explain why you believe they would not follow. Door. Well, they said which of the following data sets is most likely to be normally distributed. Well, I would say choice A, but it's really, you know, a matter of opinion, at least in this 